Crash! Dad. What was that noise? Son, the bowl. I've broken the bowl. Mum. What bowl? Son. The one with the lines on. Dad. How did you break it? Son. Mm, I was balancing it on my head. Dad. The boy's mad. Mum. How else is he going to practice? Dad. Why were you balancing it on your head? Son. I was pretending it was a hat. Dad. Why do you need to practice pretending a bowl is a hat? Son. No answer. Another good poem by Michael Rosen there from this book. Quick, let's get out of here. You can see what happened. Why was the son, the boy, pretending, uh, using a bowl as a hat? I wouldn't recommend doing that. I'm pretty sure it would upset your mum or dad. Just like in that poem. Another classic Michael Rosen poem. And I'm going to share with you a story by Michael Rosen today. And this story is called... Oh, hang on a minute. What's that poking out of the corner of the book? Ah... Oh. It's another clue as to who our character, our special character is from one of Michael Rosen's books. Last year we had this clue. Last year? Yesterday. I have big tufty ears. Today's clue, hmm, it says, I enjoy making new friends. Hmm, so this character's got big tufty ears and enjoys making new friends. Oh, I wonder who or what the character is. Hmm, well, perhaps the character's in this story. You never know, because this one is called The Bear in the Cave. And it is a book by Michael Rosen. And I'm going to share it with you today. And this is quite a special book, actually, because look. Michael Rosen was here. He signed his name in this book. Wow. Signed by the author himself. What a fabulous book to have. Oh, now this starting image is quite interesting. Hmm. Does that remind you of anything? Hmm. Does it remind you of any other images you've seen from any other book? Maybe another story by Michael Rosen. It certainly reminded me of one. I'm just going to see if I can find what it reminds me of. Oh, look. It reminds me of this page from another book written by Michael Rosen, which is called... We're going on a bear hunt. I bet lots of you have got that one at home. Hmm, interesting. Have a look at it again from the bear in the cave. Very intriguing. The Bear in the Cave by Michael Rosen I'm a bear in a cave In a cave? In a cave All alone I'm a bear all alone All alone? All alone And I sing to myself all day Dooby doo Dooby doo Dooby doodly doo I walk by the sea by the sea, by the sea. And I play with the waves all day. Splishity splash, splishity splash, splishity splashity splish. One day I heard a noise. Heard a noise? Heard a noise. It came from far away. Far away? Far away. The sound of the city in my ears. Vroomy vroom, vroomy vroom, vroomy vroomity vroom. So I got a ticket to the city. To the city? To the city. And I travelled to the city far away. Chuffity chuff, chuffity chuff, chuffity chuffity chuff. I saw people rushing past. Rushing past? Rushing past. I saw a building up to the sky, up to the sky, up to the sky. 
and cars flew by all day. Whooshy whoosh, whooshy whoosh, whooshy whooshity whoosh. I went to the market. To the market? To the market. Bananas, fish and shoes. Fish and shoes? Fish and shoes. With people shouting out all day. You gotta buy that. You gotta buy this. You gotta buy the city that. Very busy market. I ran to the park. To the park? To the park. I sat on a swing. On a swing? On a swing. But everyone laughed at me there. He 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 he. Oh dear! I ran away down the street, down the street, down the street. I've been a bit sorry for the bear. I sat on a bench, on a bench, on a bench. And I heard some people coming near. They said, it's a bear. It's a bear. It's a bear. It looks like it's lost. Like it's lost. Like it's lost. Let's take it home by the sea. Follow us. Follow us. Follow us at us. Through the park. Hee 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 through the market. You gotta buy this. You gotta buy that. You gotta buy this city that. Past the cars, whooshy whoosh, whooshy whoosh, whooshy whooshity whoosh. On the train, chuffity chuff, chuffity chuff, chuffity chuffity chuff. The city in my ears, vroomy vroom, vroomy vroom, vroomy vroomity vroom. To play by the waves. Splishity splash, splishity splash, splishity splashity splish. Oh, he's made some friends. To sing all day. Dooby doo, dooby doo, dooby doodly. Shh. That's the end. And there's that image again at the end with a slightly different look to the cave now. Oh. Well, that was The Bear in the Cave by Michael Rosen. And what did you think about that story? About that book? Did you notice anything about it? Did you find anything surprising or anything interesting? If you want to, you can rewind the video and you can watch me reading it again. What I'd like you to do, if you've had enough of listening to the story, maybe you've listened to it two times or three times, or maybe even four or five times by now, I would like you to have a little chat with your grown up about those questions. What did you notice about this book? Was there anything in it you found interesting? Was there any links you made to any other stories, perhaps? Was there anything surprising? Anything about the language or the way Michael Rosen wrote it that you found good or that you found interesting? Have a little chat and see what you come up with. And I'll ask you to pause the video while you do that and I'll pretend to be listening in. And so pause the video, have a chat about that now. Mm, I think I can hear lots of things coming from you. They're coming out through the ether into my brain. I heard somebody mentioning that they noticed that the way the story was written, there was always a question following up, a statement. Hmm, what do I mean by that, Mr. McInnes? Well, let's start at the very beginning. There was a statement, a fact. It said, I'm a bear in a cave. And then it followed it up straight away with a question. In a cave? And I had to change my voice when I was reading that because there's a question mark. Oh, it's definitely a question. So I had to make sure that I read it like a question. I'm a bear in a cave. That's a statement. And then the question, in a cave? I had to change my expression. I'm a bear all alone. All alone? All alone. It did that a lot, didn't it? It did it on almost every single page. Like this one, for example. So I got a ticket to the city. To the city? To the city. And then it always answered that question with another statement. So some of you noticed that. Well done if you did. Here's another one. I saw people rushing past. Rushing past? Rushing past. 
So yes, there was a statement followed by a question and then that was followed by another statement. I heard somebody else mentioning that they noticed there was a lot of repeated language. Yes, there was, especially when the bear was describing what it was that he saw or heard. For example, we had the cars flying by, whooshy whoosh, whooshy whoosh, whooshy whooshity whoosh. Or we had the uh, people in the market saying, shouting out all day, you gotta buy this, you gotta buy that, you gotta buy this itty that. And we had, I liked the playing in the water. We had splishity splash, splishity splash, splishity splashity splish. Lots of repeated language in there. And that is special language, that kind of language there. When it's describing what something sounds like, we call that onomatopoeia. There was lots of onomatopoeic language. Onomatopoeia is words that sound like what it, the sound that they're describing. So that word splash, that's kind of like the sound it makes when something splashes in the water. So splashity splish, splashity splish. It sounds like the water actually splashing and splishing, those words. So that's onomatopoeia. And when we had the sound of the city and the bear was saying that it sounded like vroom, vroomy, vroomy, vroomity, vroom. Those cars vrooming, that word vroom is onomatopoeia because the word vroom actually sounds like what the cars are doing. So there was lots of onomatopoeic repeated language in there, which I enjoyed. And somebody also mentioned, I thought I heard, that perhaps this bear could in fact be the very bear that is in We're Going on a Bear Hunt. If I show you We're Going on a Bear Hunt, if you look at the back of the story at the very end, you may remember the bear walking back to its home, to its cave, which is right by the sea. I wonder if it is the same bear. And this bear was rather lonely in his cave, wasn't he? I felt a bit sorry for the bear, but I'm glad at the end of the story he found some good friends. And hopefully their grown-ups let them uh, go with the bear. Because <laughs> you should go off with the bear on your own, should you really? I wouldn't recommend it. I hope you enjoyed listening to that story by Michael Rosen. I've got something that you could do for me about that story today. So let me share what it is that I thought we could do. You notice the way in the story, and we've already talked about it, there was the onomatopoeic language. I wondered what other things the bear might have seen or heard on that journey. We might not have seen it all. So I wonder, for example, if when he was in the park, sitting on the swing, Perhaps he might have saw a duck on a lake or a pond. And if he had, what kind of onomatopoeic sound would that duck make? But I don't just want to come up with the sound. I want to write it. I want to explore it, just like Michael Rosen did with his language. He didn't just say the train goes chuff chuff. He said that he made it sound like the train was going chuffity chuff, chuffity chuff, chuff, chuffity chuff. I wonder if we could do something similar with the duck. So ducks say quack, we all know that, yes. So how might Michael Rosen have put that into the story of the bear in the cave? If the bear saw a duck, he might have heard, oh, I thought I heard somebody say, quacky quack, quacky quack, quacky quackity quack. Ah, oh, that's just like in the story, just like the train going chuffity chuff, chuffity chuff, chuff, chuffity chuff. Or, the cars going whooshy whoosh, whooshy whoosh, whooshy whooshity whoosh. He might have seen some ducks that went quacky quack, quacky quack, quacky quackity quack. It's a bit of a tongue twister almost, isn't it? Maybe you could have a go at this next one. Maybe you could tell your pet, your grown up, what you think this one might have sounded like. Perhaps the bear, when he lit his fire in his cave at the end, Remember that part? What might the fire have sounded like? What kind of onomatopoeic sounds might you have heard as the fire is burning that wood? Think about what kind of sounds you would hear. 
what might you hear? Tell your grown-up, pause the video, what might you hear? Can you make it sound like Michael Rosen wrote it in the book? And I'll share mine with you in a minute. Off you go do that. Mm. I wonder what you shared with your grown-ups. Was it similar to mine? Let's have a look. I thought the fire might sound a little something like crickle crackle, crickle crackle, crickle crickety crackle. Crickle crackle, crickle crackle, crickle crickety crackle. Oh, it's such a tongue twister, it's hard to get your tongue around it. Did you have something like that? Because fire crackles when the wood is burning, doesn't it? Let's have a look at another one. Ooh, leaves. Not just any old leaves, these are dry leaves that the bear might have walked on, might have stomped on as he was passing through a path or through the park. What kind of sound might the leaves make? What onomatopoeic language could we use for the leaves? And then can we turn that into a little bit of poetry like Michael Rosen did? Like his splishity splash, splishity splash, splishity splashity splish. What might the leaves sound like? Pause the video and see if you can come up with something with your grown up. Say it to each other. What might it sound like? Can you get the tongue twister? Have a go. Oh, I hope you came up with one. I wonder if it was similar to mine. I thought that dried up leaves are very crunchy aren't they maybe you thought the same thing too and i went with crunchy crunch crunchy crunch crunchy crunchity crunch do you see how it's got that rhythm we talked about rhythm yesterday when you were performing your poems and how things have got to have a rhythm the way it sounds and the way you perform it i did the same for crickle crackle as well Crickle crackle, crickle crackle, crickle crickety crackle. Hope you can hear that. Or the duck. Quacky quack, quacky quack, quacky quackety quack. Shall we have a go at clapping the rhythm to quacky quack, quacky quack, quacky quackety quack? And do it with me, ready? One, two, three. Quacky quack, quacky quack, quacky quackety quack. Mm, shall we try the rhythm to crunchy crunch, crunchy crunch, crunchy crunchity crunch? Are you ready? One, two, three. Crunchy crunch, crunchy crunch, crunchy crunchity crunch. Oh, I'm enjoying this. That was good fun. Well, I think you could have a go at that now. So I have got six pictures for you here and we've got the duck and the leaves and the fire again. I'm just hopefully you can see I'm going to move my little video of myself out of the way so you can see a bit better. We've got the duck and the leaves and the fire. I've also put in put in three other pictures that I thought the bear might have come across. Uh, so we've got the duck. You can magpie what we've already done, or you can come up with your own one. Remember to keep to that rhythm. There's the fire and the leaves as well. Now we've got fireworks. Perhaps the bear might have seen some fireworks while he was in the city. What onomatic, onomatopoeic language do you think you could come up with for the fireworks that use that rhythm? And I've got the wind there as well. That's what that picture down here is where the trees are really blowing. The wind is rushing through those leaves. Think about the sounds the bear might have heard. Can we come up with an onomatopoeic rhyme with the rhythm? For the wind there. And this final picture, I thought I would go with something a little bit different. And rather than onomatopoeic language, language that sounds like something. I thought in some cities there can be a lot of mess and dirt, which we thought about when we were thinking about plastic pollution. Very, very sad. But perhaps the bear saw a horrible, disgusting rubbish dump like this. And I thought rather than sounds, maybe that might have heard might have had a horrendous smell. Ugh! So do you think you could come up with a smell? Something yucky, perhaps, that the bear smelled that would fit with the rhythm. Might use the word yuck or pong or something like that to help you out with that one. And when you've done those six, you can even make up some of your own. So you could draw a picture of what it is the bear saw or heard, and you can write down a rhyme that uses that rhythm. So do that for all six of these and then you can come up with some of your own, draw a picture and write the rhythm, uh, write your uh, poet, poem part, your onomatopoeic language underneath. 
So if you've got a piece of paper or an exercise book to hand, I would probably use that. I might start with a duck and write the word duck. And then underneath my onomatopoeic language, I went with quacky quack, quacky quack, quacky quackity quack. Yours might be different. Then you could move on to one of the other pictures, write the name of what that thing is, and then your little rhythm, your little bit of poetry underneath. Crunchy, crunch, crunchy, crunch, crunchy, crunchity, crunch, or maybe something different. And when you've done all six, I'll be very impressed if you can make up some of your own as well. Because we are being poets just like Michael Rosen today. And that would be amazing. So I'll leave these here for you to see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say bye bye in a second so you can get on with that. Don't forget to send your work to your teacher, me or Mr. Davis or Mrs. Martin or Miss Dyer on Class Dojo so that we can see your amazing poetry skills. And I hope you have fun with that today. And don't forget to think about our two clues as well. Hmm. We've had the big tufty ears. We had clue number two that you just it's a character that enjoys making new friends. Could it be? I wonder. Have a think about that as well, and you might be able to message your thoughts to your teacher. Have fun with that, and I will see you again later on this week. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.